cheese. Saint Dairy Products. I still say solid dairy products.
gives this who gives this man to be married to this woman? You may be seated. On behalf of Sam and Crystal and their families, I'd welcome and say thank you for all, for all of you for coming here today to be a part of this, their special day. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you know all things. You know why we are here this evening. And we want to thank you, dear Father, for this wonderful institution of marriage. Dear Father, we ask for a special blessing this evening for Sam and Crystal as they are about to begin their life as husband and wife. That you would bless them and keep them all the days of their life. That you would lead them on the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Dear Father, we ask for all of our marriages and for each and every one of us here, married and unmarried, that you would bless and keep all of us, dear Father, in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Dearly beloved, we are assembled in the presence of God to unite Sam and Crystal in holy matrimony. Instituted of God, regulated by his commandment, blessed of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to be held in honor among all men. This sacred relation is to be entered into soberly, advisedly, discreetly, reverently, and in the fear of God. Into this, into this beautiful and holy relationship these two persons desire now to enter. They desire to take each the other as husband and wife, for prosperity or adversity, sickness or health, poverty or riches, and to perform all the duties belonging to such a relationship to the end of life. To some of these duties as laid down in the Holy Scriptures, I now call your attention. God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord declared, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and that a twain shall be one flesh. The Apostle Paul, speaking by the Holy Spirit, said, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. May the spirit of Ruth, the ancestress of our Lord, accompany this couple as they journey through life together. Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Amen. Sam and Crystal, here you are. Are you nervous yet? Good. I'll try not to make you too nervous. No, but um, Sam and Crystal, it's it's a wonderful to be here. It really is. And we talked a while back, Sam, but I want to mention it again. You don't know how many times Cheryl and I prayed that God would bring you one of his daughters to be your helpmate. And it's wonderful to be standing here with you too, knowing that God chose to answer that prayer. And he brought one of his dearly beloved daughters to be your helpmate, to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. So it's an honor to be here. Samuel, John, and Crystal Dawn. I want to leave you a little, before we turn to the Word, I want to leave you with a little something to think about. You know what the word, the name Samuel means, Crystal? There was a lady in the Bible named Hannah who couldn't have any children. And she prayed fervently that God would give her a child, and he did. And she named him Samuel. And what did she, because she said, I have asked of the Lord. 
And what she was saying, God heard my prayer. And I'm sure that you prayed that God would bring you a husband. So now when you think of Sam, call him Samuel, you can think, I've asked of the Lord, and the Lord heard my prayer. And his middle name, John. You know what, that Bible, the Bible cult talks of a man named John also, John the Baptist. John means God is gracious. So now when you think of your husband's name, I want that to be in your mind, that God is not only is God gracious, but God hears prayers. But most importantly, when you think of how gracious God is and how God hears prayers, Crystal, I want you to always, mind and heart, turn to the man who hung on the center cross of Calvary. That's where the graciousness of God is. That's where all of the prayers of the saints who have gone on before were answered. And I don't have any biblical explanations for Crystal Dawn. But when I look at that, that name, it just, I just see a sparkling sunrise. And God brought some light into your world, didn't he? <laughs> but you know, Sam, when you think of Crystal and think of her middle name as Dawn, I want you to think of the true Dawn, the one whose name is Dawn. In the second chapter of Luke, Zechariah talks about the day spring from on high which has visited us. Who, that's Jesus Christ. And so know that Crystal was a blessing from Christ himself. But the biggest blessing is Jesus Christ himself. So always remember when you see her and when you look at him, remember how gracious God is, how God answers prayers, and how Jesus Christ himself is the day string from on high which has visited us. Now I want to go and just read two verses from the Bible. And we've already recited part of one of the verses. Our help was in the name of the Lord. But we want to read the first and second verses of the 127th Psalm, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. In a few moments, you'll be husband and wife. And you'll begin your walk together. And I know you desire to have a home, a house, and build a home, and have a family, if God so wills. But Psalm, the psalmist is telling both of you, Sam and Crystal, except the Lord build the house, it is vain to try to build it. Except the, the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. And what he's telling us here is we can work all of our lives to build something. We can try to protect the cities and those around us. The watchman can try in vain or wake the people up, but if the Lord doesn't keep the city, it's a futile effort. And so for the two of you, as you begin together here, or I should say you can continue because your journey together has already started some time ago when you started to date. But take these words to heart. Peter, in his third chapter of his first epistle, epistle, tells us to sanctify the Lord God in your heart. What that really means is set the, the Lord God apart in your heart. In other words, give him the highest room. That's what it means. Peter's telling the two of you and for all of us to, that Jesus Christ needs to have the utmost and the highest priority in your lives. And if he doesn't, everything that you do in this world will be in vain. That's what the psalmist is telling us. And he tells us also through Solomon in another place, he said, Trust the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Or, or in other words, it's saying he shall make your paths smooth or straight. We hear a lot today, well, I feel or I think. Have you ever heard that? And we ever gone down that road? We do, don't we? And God tells us very clearly to trust the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And then he says, or he shall make your path smooth. So as husband and wife, it is us most important for both of you to search the scriptures, to seek the guidance of the wise ones and the people you know around you who have journeyed 
for quite a few years. What does God say? What does the Word say? We don't go on what I feel or what I think. Because that will lead us astray, always. And when it, ta- when it talks about husbands and wives in the Scriptures, when it talks about brothers and sisters in Christ, when it talks about wh- how we as God's children are to live and behave and act in this world, let's always trust the Lord. And let's not lean on our own understanding. That's what the psalmist is telling us. Unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh in vain. And then he goes on in the second verse and says, It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. Sam is a breadwinner. We are to, as men are to earn our living by the sweat of our face, as the Bible tells us. That's a command. We are to go out and work. But he said, unless the Lord does the work, unless the Lord blesses our efforts, it'll come to nothing. He said, don't worry, don't fret, don't stew. Be obedient to the word of God. Listen to him. Do what he asks you to do. And he'll take care of everything else. On the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord and our Savior tells us in the sixth chapter, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. He knows you have need of a place to live. He knows you have need of clothes, of food. He knows what you have need of. But he says, as he goes on, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And so I want to stress that again. And I know where your heart is, Sam. And I know that's your desire, and Crystal also. But trust the Lord. And lean not on your own understanding. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. And then the last part of that says, For he for so he giveth his beloved sleep. God knows you. He knows both of you. He saw you in eternity past. He knows what you need. And he is the only one that can make it so you, you can be at peace. So that you can be at rest at the end of the day. And truly lay down in your bed and fall asleep, knowing all is well. So trust him. Lean on him and be assured of this thing, this truth, that God will never leave you nor forsake you. There's a song that we sing, and you guys know it. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Always seek his word, his counsel, and his guidance as you walk hand in hand, heart to heart, following in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. Trust him in everything, and it will truly be a wonderful life. But when things do happen to go awry, which they will, you guys aren't going to agree all the time. But I would encourage you with one more thing. Always ask the Heavenly Father to keep in your hearts and in your minds how much God has forgiven you for Christ's sake. Because if you can, have, if you can walk with that knowledge, how much you have been forgiven, then you can forgive one another. And don't be bashful to, about forgiving one another. Use that grace that God has given us freely. Walk in forgiveness, looking always into the face of our Lord and Savior. God bless both of you. Amen. Now the congregation is invited to sing in his time.
I was teasing, or maybe, maybe I was being serious, I don't know, last night that Paul was just going to take 40 minutes, so I would have 20 minutes to address the couple, so I will take advantage. Actually, I have more than 20 because Paul didn't speak 40. So. The subject of time. I want to discuss that a little bit tonight. And leading into that discussion, I wrote a little paragraph that will maybe direct our thoughts and our minds to the subject of time. Okay? Once upon a time, not so long ago, I took the time one day to contact Sam and Crystal. The purpose of this contact was to arrange a time when we could get together to discuss their life together. And as time flies, and time was passing quickly, we agreed that it would be about time to get together. So after agreeing upon a time and the amount of times, as well as the duration of time, that we would need to meet, the time came. During this time spent together, the three of us, we discussed the life and times of Sam and Crystal. We talked about the time growing up in their respective families, the time that they have spent together during their dating and engagement time, and the time that they would spend together as a husband and wife. And now the time has come that they have been waiting for. Did you get the common theme through that paragraph? Time. Years ago, once upon a time, I was reading an article in a, in a magazine. The magazine article or the, the, the magazine um, edition was devoted to the subject of time. Guess what magazine that was found in? No, not time. National Geographic. <laughs> But it, good, good guess. It was, and they talked about it as being a really slippery subject. How do you wrap your hands around time? As time waits for no man, and time is as swift as a vanishing dream. We can speak of time in many different ways. One is the progress of existence since the beginning of time, as time has marched on since God spoke the world into existence. We can speak of it as a period of time, whether it's long. We are living in what we call the church age, the time between Jesus' first coming and his second coming. Or we can speak of it in a short period of time, you know, the time that we might meet together. A particular point in time, 6 p.m. on February 1st, 2020. We can speak of it as a more or less defined period, about the old times, or an indefinite period, there was a time in my life. The days of our particular life, we can speak about in my lifetime, I have seen these various things. Days past, once upon a time, or the days to come, sometime. You can speak about a definite portion of time allotted, do you have the time? and selflessness to take the time and an opportune moment in time, such as a stitch in time saves nine and in the nick of time. So he used this word over and over again in so many different manners. The song that we just sang is based on a verse from Ecclesiastes. Third chapter of Ecclesiastes begins the very well-known portion of scripture, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. But the, the verses that, that we sang from, that the song is based from, are found in verses 9 through 13 of that chapter. And it says, What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their hearts, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat 
and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. These verses, I believe, speak of the days of a particular time, the days of your life together. It's a very comforting bunch of words there, this scripture, is that the days that God has given you as a couple, as a husband and wife, are a gift of God. And we could probably rephrase that and say, I know that there is no better thing that for a man to rejoice in this and to do good in his life and to eat and to drink and enjoy the good of his labor. God has given you a particular time within time to spend together as a husband and wife. And God is pleased in that, in that he has designed it that a husband and wife would live together in his perfect love. The Bible tells us concerning this subject of time recorded in the book of Galatians chapter 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. That's the purpose that God sent his son. In that fullness of time, when everything was complete, when everything was complete concerning the prophecy, all that the Old Testament, the scriptures spoke concerning the coming of Jesus, it all came to fruition for the purpose that he could come down and bless us with the hope of eternal life. That he could redeem us. He could redeem you, his children. Repurchase you into his priceless possession. Now that you are living in this time, as his children, there are some warnings or exhortations concerning this. Paul, writing unto the church in Ephesus, tells them, and I believe tells us also, that we would redeem the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Redeem the time. Make good use of the time. Remembering that God has purchased you, you are his precious children, and that you would remember the will of God. The will of God is that you would be saved and that you would also serve one another in that love, which is manifest, made known in the person of Jesus Christ. Paul also tells the Romans, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Paul is exhorting us to walk in repentance. Brother Paul exhorted you to walk in forgiveness. This Paul and I will exhort you to walk in repentance, daily repentance toward God and in faith toward him and repentance toward each other. And this is made possible by that fullness of time when God sent forth his son. Because of him, you can walk in repentance and in love one toward another. The Bible, finally, it's the end of my time here, the Bible tells us, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Jesus, the one-time sacrifice, and on that you live. In that you have the hope of eternal life. And you have all the blessings of this life because of that which has been done for you, accomplished for you on that center cross of Calvary. And we live in the promise that Jesus is going to return sometime. We don't know. The angels in heaven don't know. The Son of Man doesn't know. But the promise of God is that Jesus will return to take us to be with him forever. Live in that promise, Sam and Crystal. In Jesus' name, amen. I charge you both as you stand in the presence of God to remember that love, loyalty, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will avail as the foundation of a happy home. If the solemn vows you are about to make be kept faithfully, and if steadfastly you endeavor to do the will of your heavenly Father, your life will be joyful and the home you are establishing will abide in peace. I entreat you both to seek the help of God in this sacred moment and to look to him steadfastly for his love and grace, which will make your marriage rich 
in comfort and fruitful in service. Sam, will you take Crystal to be your wedded wife, to cherish her and live with her according to God's holy ordinance? Will you pledge your loyalty to her and promise to love, honor, comfort, and keep her in health and in sickness, in prosperity and adversity, and keep yourself unto her only so long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Crystal, will you take Sam to be your wedded husband, to cherish him and live with him according to God's holy ordinance? Will you pledge your loyalty to him and promise to love, honor, comfort and keep him in health and in sickness, in prosperity and adversity, and keep yourself unto him only so long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will.
could stay like that. Let us pray. God of all grace and goodness, thou hast heard the declaration of these thy servants. May it please thee to bless them as they are now about to be joined together in holy matrimony. Guide them and sanctify them by thy spirit and fill them with the profound sense of thy holy obligations of the vows they are about to make. Help them to look to thee for thine assistance and enter into these sacred obligations in humble dependence upon thine enabling grace. Grant all of these mercies, O Father, we ask, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have the rings? Okay, Sam, repeat after me. I, Samuel John Usula. I, Samuel John Usula. Take thee, Crystal Don Matson. Take thee, Crystal Don Matson. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this time forth. To have and to hold from this time forth. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In health and in sickness. In health and in sickness. To love and to cherish till death us do part. To love and to cherish till death us do part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And as a token thereof. I give thee this ring. Give thee this ring. And to this I do pledge thee my faith. This I do pledge thee my faith. Okay. Crystal, repeat after me. I, Crystal Don Matson. Don Take thee, Samuel John Usula. Take thee, Samuel John Usula. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this time forth. To have and to hold from this time forth. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In health and in sickness. In health and in sickness. To love and to cherish till death us do part. To love and to cherish till death us do part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And as a token thereof. I give thee this ring. I give thee this ring. And to this I do pledge thee my faith. And to this I do pledge thee my faith. By the authority committed unto me as a minister of the gospel, I declare that Sam and Crystal are now husband and wife. According to the ordinance of God and the law of the state. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Love is not a place to come and go as we please. It's a house we enter in, then commit to never leave. So Lock the door behind you and throw away the key. We'll work it out together. Let it bring us to our Love is a shelter in a raging storm. Love is a peace in the middle of a war. And if we try to leave, may God send angels to guard the door. No. 
Love is not a fight, but it's something worth fighting for. To some, love is a word that they can fall into. But when they're falling out, can they live it like it's true? Love is a shelter in a raging storm. Love is a Love is not a fight, but it's something worth fighting for. Love will come to save us if we will only call. Ask nothing from us, but demand we give our all. Love is a shelter in a raging storm. Love is a to guard the door. No, love is not a fight, but it's something worth fighting for. Most merciful and gracious God, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, bestow upon these thy servants the seal of thine approval and thy fatherly benediction, granting them grace to fulfill with pure and steadfast affection the covenant and vows made between them. Guide them together, we beseech thee, in the way of righteousness and peace, that loving and serving thee with one heart and mind all the days of their life, they may be abundantly enriched with the tokens of thine everlasting favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear us now, dear Lord, as we pray, as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully look upon you with his favor and fill you with all spiritual blessing so that your sojourning here will glorify God and be to your mutual benefit. Amen. God bless you, Crystal. Beautiful bride. God bless you, Sam. A beautiful groom. <laughs> Handsome. Okay, you may stand up. Take your bouquet. 
gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Sam Yusula. are now invited to join Sam and Crystal and their families for the reception in the church dining hall. During the singing of the congregational hymns, The Love of God and In Christ Alone, the families will be exiting the sanctuary. Please remain seated until the ushers excuse you from your seats. And other than the family, the family will be departing through the center aisle. The rest of you, please exit the sanctuary to my door, on my door to the right. And before we sing, we'll ask for a blessing upon the meal which has been prepared. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bountiful goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.